Wow. Look at all this stuff here. That's the aftermath of my balancing pawn last night. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny, hot Australia. We've got five amps outside. Still a bit of shading on the panels. Uh, 11.30, close to noon. So we will soon have two kilowatts here on the solar incoming to our battery, which I have. I have top balanced it last night. I had the Blue Eddy sitting here and everything was connected to the to my portable battery. Got the power supply there, the charger here, and also the 40 amp Chinese cracker was in use here. Yeah, and as you can see from the screenshot here I took last night, we had the same situation again at 55.1 volts. We had several cells going over 3.6 volts again, while others like number four is still under 3.4. There was a total mismatch of total mismatch of cells a few videos back we bottom balanced the battery pack you know when i installed the balancer the first time the battery was empty once i connected the balancer and let it run for a while it balanced the battery pack perfectly at the bottom all the cells were totally equal they were all the same at about 2.6 2.8 volts that was perfect i was a bit expecting if i charge up the battery now to 3.4, 3.5 volts. The balancer will be able to keep up and still balance the pack again at the top, which it potentially will do over time, but I, would, but I just wasn't patient enough for that. And then I started balancing them manually again. So I, um, I discharged some of them with the light bulbs here, just connect the two wires to one of the cells and, and discharge them. And you can see here on the screenshot, um, some, of the, some of the cells already are balanced now at 3.5 volts. And this took all very, very long, hours and hours. I was sitting here in my garage. My wife was looking for me and I was hiding here in the corner. I said, now I haven't got time to come in to sleep or eat or no time. I need to balance this battery. It needs to work. It needs to be top balanced again. So eventually I got the Chinese cracker out here again and started connecting the, uh, the big clamps here to a single to single um, cells and recharge them to 3.6 volts and let them absorb and everything. So some some of them reached the 3.6 volts very, very quickly and others took like 20 minutes, half an hour to actually get there. And then I used the power supply here to charge up the battery during, it was already dark, you know, I needed to get some power into the battery. So I used the power supply connected to the Blue Eddy and charged up the battery higher and higher and higher, very slowly increased the voltage and charged and discharged single cells to balance them again. And then here on this screenshot, you can see 80, uh, 58.2 volts we have reached, which is like a 3.6, a little bit higher. The cells were pretty much balanced now again. Before, because I've got two of these balancers, I bought a second one for the other battery pack. I was so convinced about this balancer here, so I bought a second one. And I thought maybe something is wrong with the balancer, it doesn't really work or something. So I replaced it with a new one. And the new one did exactly the same as the other one. So it's not the balancer, it's just the situation. I'll explain this in a second. At this point of time here, we had about 20 millivolt deviation across all cells at 3.6 six two six four six three volts so they were very close together everything was over 3.6 volts i really charged them high up all of them to get them back in shape to get them balanced again and then i connected the balancer again and waited for another half an hour no there was actually only three minutes later i could see already a drop in voltage differences from 20 millivolt to 16 millivolt only. So the balancer actually worked quite well within minutes now and balanced the pack perfectly. So this taught me again, I kind of knew this before, but I just wanted to test it again <laughs> just to see what happens. So the balancer only works at a, at a higher st state of charge. At 3.4 volts, Guys, at 3.4 volts or 3.45 or 3.5 volts, the capacity of the cells are, is still too much to get balanced by this active balancer. 
The voltage seems to be almost the same, but the state of charge, the capacity is still different. And only if you charge higher, 3.55, 3.6, the balancer actually has a chance to, to, to do its job, to balance these cells. Because even this balancer has 5 amps. And some of you have suggested take a 10 amp balancer. Well, it wouldn't make a difference because the the difference between single cells is just not there. So the, the balancer cannot even perform at its maximum current. It wouldn't make a difference if we have a 100 amp balancer or a 1 amp balancer. Because this one here clearly balanced only with 0 0.5 to 1 amp maximum yesterday. But at a high state of charge, this current is then enough to do actually work because the state of charge, the capacity difference between the cells is very, very small while it is larger if you go down the curve again. And because I messed around with the bottom balancing just a few weeks ago when we installed the balancer, the battery was nice and bottom balanced and now while charging it up with a better sunshine outside now I had actually the chance to, to fully charge the battery now. Well, it did exactly that, right? It, it, um, well, I charged it to 3.4, 3.45 volts, and we could see single cells are peaking out again. 6, 7, and 8 were just far higher with the voltage as the other ones. And I had to turn off charging sometimes um, before the BMS actually kicked off because I had some loads connected here, which I still needed to be running for battery testing purposes, of course. And I measured the balancer and I could see 1, 1 1.3, 1.4 amps. It's, it's putting from one cell into another. And if you have up to 5 ampere hours difference in capacity in these cells, it could take hours, a long time, to make balancing actually work. And I didn't have the patience for that. So, But now it seems to be all good. At least last night it was good. All the cells are now top balanced at 3.6 volts. I connected the balancer overnight. I charged the car as well for two hours last night. So the battery went down from 100% to 70%. And well, we will see what will happen today. Yeah, it is now 12 o'clock and now we have 29 amps outside. So 1.6 kilowatts already. And we'll see, we are at 86%. So let's see how far we can come up. Well, from all the testing we have done before with the um, 4S configuration here with the Palo cells and the 4S balancer, this all worked fine, but these are only 5 ampere hour batteries capacity, and these are 280 ampere hour batteries. So <laughs> there's a huge difference. And the balancer maybe sees this huge capacity and says, yeah, well, this will take a while to balance, Andy. <laughs> this is not a quick job. What do you want? So let's charge up the battery today and have a look together what is going on, if it works again, and if the balancer is actually now capable of balancing the pack. Yeah, guys, well, talking about this BMS, I, uh, I certainly am aware that this BMS with its relay is, is less than optimal. Just disconnecting the battery is just not good enough for a BMS these days. This acts more like a battery protect relay. It protects your battery from overcharging, discharging, high temperatures, low temperatures, all the kind of stuff. It monitors each single cell. If one goes too high, too low, it disconnects the whole battery. It's a battery protect. A good BMS should turn off your solar charges and prevent the cells from being overcharged. But keep the load connected because it then discharges the battery at the same time, which helps lowering the voltage for these cells. And the same at the bottom. If you have a low voltage cell, it should disconnect your load but keep the charger connected to recharge your battery to help it get out of this low voltage situation. A better BMS would actually communicate with your solar charge controllers and just throttle the current. 
Many of you have studied this for quite a while. Jeremy is telling me this for, for months now, for years almost, for, for decades. Now that's not how long the channel exists. He, he tells me this for a long time. He's got this Orion uh, R, R, RJ2 or something, BMS, and this can communicate over the CAN bus with the Victron gear and just limits the solar charge controllers then. So they, they throttle down their charging current and actually the BMS or the balancer has then time to balance your pack. And then if everything is in balance again, it, it ramps up the charging speed again. That would be an optimal BMS, right? I know the battery on BMS here from Australia does the same. It communicates with your Victron stuff. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of money. Maybe I should get in contact with them and see what they can what they can come up with. And there's also the Rec, Rec BMS and one or two others which can actually communicate with Victron. How this all works, I don't know. Someone needs to send me an email with instructions for that again to make this all work. If I'm going down this path, it would be the optimal solution, of course, because then, well, we don't disconnect the battery just because one cell is high. We just lower the um, charging current or, or zero the charging current, but still leave everything else connected. The QUCC with a relay is just suboptimal in this perspective. It shouldn't disconnect your battery. Uh, 1.7, 32 amps outside. Huh? Welcome to sunny, hot Australia. So we are now at 3.4 volts, 54.5. Five. I know this because I calculated it. Got a cell deviation of 27 millivolt already. Number nine is high, number 15 is low. It's good we have six, seven, and eight all in line now. See, all my top balancing seems to pay off now. And we just need to wait now and see 36 amps into the battery if the balancer actually kicks in at some stage. Okay, let's give it some time and we will have a look again. Cell number 15 is the lowest. I remember cell number 15 from last night. We had some fun together. 15 is now only 70 milliamps going in. See, the difference is not, is not high enough to push a lot of current in there. I have configured both solar charge controllers to use the standard lithium iron phosphate profile from Victron. So nothing modified, just select the profile, lithium ion phosphate, and it sets all the parameters. And it will charge to 3.55 volts with a two hour absorption time, and then goes down to uh, 3.375 as floating. Let's see if we can do that with the battery. 19, oh, it goes down. It looks like it's balancing a bit. So we are now at 99.6% state of charge. That's what the smart chan claims. If we go to advanced here. Yeah, minus 1.2 ampere hours until it reaches 100%. That's what the smart chan is expecting until it reaches 100%. I think we are a bit lower. 54.5, hmm, well, unfortunately, we are not making much anymore now, 2.9 amps outside. By the way, you can see all these data and all these information here by clicking on the link down in the description. There is a guest access to the Victron VRM, and you can see all the data. 4.1 kilowatt hours we've made today, that's insane, it's nice. Four or five weeks ago, I made maybe 1.9 or so, and now we have more than doubled it. And the BMS at 54.6 volts, it claims 23. Number 15 is high, number 3 is low. But that's all right, it's 24 millivolt. The balancer can deal with it. So, and cell number 16 is now our cell with the highest voltage here and I just um, put the ampere meter on it on the balancer cable we can see uh, 330 milliamps and it's rising because the voltage is rising in this cell yeah, 
and we already have 50 millivolt deviation now I think it's getting interesting now quickly 55.1 still charging with 3.5 amps well, we are now at 55.7 volts this is all good apart from cell number one two three and four and number 16 is running away well, we can also see number 16 is being discharged with 480 milliamps at the moment it's rising but because we are still charging with 3.4 amps it doesn't really make a difference it slows it slows that down we are still charging more into the battery than we discharge through the balancer okay we are at 56.3 now still charging with 3.4 amps and this should be 3.52 volts um, they are close to 3.5 this one is very low number four what's going on with number four here number four is getting an additional 200 milliamps 240 milliamps from the balancer and our number 16 which is at 3.6 is at 700 milliamps being discharged. I have also set the internal balancing of the BMS here to kick in at 3.6 volts to assist the balancer while discharging this one cell, but I still think it is too much and it will disconnect our battery soon again. Oh, we are close, we are close. I've got my lights here. We go up here I just discharge number 16 manually just a tiny bit and this has lower the voltage here to 3.6 and it also has made number 15 now the highest one so 3.55 is the overall goal now yeah 56.8 is the maximum we, yep they are both yellow in absorption mode so the battery has now fully absorbed you can see there's zero amps going in zero watts and now the balancer has actually time to, to balance the pack here. And we can see 380 milliamps coming out of number 16, which is the highest one. And the voltage has already dropped here to 3591. And let's see if number four still gets power here from the balancer. That is the white cable here. Yeah, 200, and 200 milliamps roughly it gets from the balancer. So this one is still being charged while the larger ones are being discharged and I can see the deviation now comes comes down again here from 100 millivolts we had just had to 65 already and it goes down. So if we keep this voltage here for a while we will see the battery will balance completely. So I give this half an hour or so and then we check again. 64 we have. All right, uh, well, now after a good 45 minutes, we are down to 11 millivolt deviation at 3.55 volts. So they all should have 3.55 now. At least, yeah, they are very, very nice balanced now at this voltage. Okay, so the next, the next test tomorrow would be to lower the voltage a little bit. I don't want to really charge them to 3.55 every time all right anyway guys i think this is it for today so this was my first charging test with the built-in lithium iron phosphate profile in the victron charge controllers and after after i have done the top balancing last night of course that was the initial top balancing and now we can see the the um the balancer is actually doing its work here now we've got nine millivolt 11 10 so this is all nice and balanced now there's no problem there anymore okay i keep fiddling around with these settings and see what i came up with what i can learn what i can process what i can share with you in this regards okay until then guys stay charged and safe of course thanks for all your comments support and donations and i'll catch you in the next one thanks guys see you then bye bye